Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna get going right now. I'm gonna share my screen with you and we'll get started on the PowerPoint. We're going to be jumping back and forth between several different pieces of information today. So um, I'll be in and out of this screen uh, at different times. If you have a question, um, I've tried to mute people as they've come in, so there's no feedback. So please let me know if you have any questions. So again, uh, we found out yesterday at our meeting that there are a lot of great suggestions, things to remember, things to think about as you move forward, but it always works out better when we work together. So the agenda for today, we're gonna spend most of our time talking about the Wisconsin Forward test. We're gonna look at eDirect, we'll talk about progress reports, how to get there, we'll talk about tickets, when you can expect yours, what they look like, et cetera. We'll spend a little bit of time briefly talking about spring map, We'll talk about PALS and the future of reading readiness, and then finally, uh, the climate survey. The last three will be very quick. We're gonna spend most of our time working on Wisconsin Forward. So let's get started. Things to think about, again, uh, text-dependent analysis. If you have not shared the writing checklist with students, please do that with staff and students. Um, also, it was a suggestion yesterday that you uh, share the rubric with staff so that they can see things that uh, what, what is going to be looking uh, looked for in the scoring. Wouldn't hurt, I wouldn't um, suggest suddenly doing this as test preparation, but in fact, might be something that we wanna use all year long. The test administration manual we'll talk about as well, as well as the online training tool, we'll go there and take a look quickly, and then we'll talk about tickets. Just a reminder that you need to send me your confidentiality agreement um, for the building level, um, that the staff in your buildings should be taking a look at this, signing off on it, and giving it to you for the building level proctor agreements. Um, just it covers everyone in case there's any ever any issues, and we'll take a look at where these can be found, uh, resources, et cetera. And before we get in too deep with this, we are going to uh, just remind you that if you have opt-outs, which you already have several, that you please email them, uh, uh, scan a copy if it's a handwritten note, and email that to either myself or to Sarah Wallner, and we'll take care of it on our end. I do need to report this to the school board at the end of the, the testing window, so please give me that information. If you have any questions or if there's any concerns about it, please let me know. It should say if the student's uh, the family wants to opt the student out of the forward test, it should say forward exam or the Wisconsin State exam. Uh, if uh, I've seen some that say standardized testing, uh, it needs to be a little bit more specific than that. Um, otherwise, um, the, the, we really don't know for sure what it is that the, the parent wants the student opted out of. If you have questions about this, please let me know at any time. All right, text-dependent analysis. You can have a copy of the student checklist on uh, the desks. Students can have that during the test. It needs to be a fresh copy. It cannot be something that they've saved from work in the classroom. So you need to make a copy of it, hand it out at the beginning of this assessment session for TDA, collect it back in, and shred those um, afterwards. I will, we're going to skip out right now to the uh, home page, uh, of my home page, and we are going to go and find this information so that you can see it. You go to the assessment um, administration home page, I'm going to just click on the forward exam. This is the public facing side. I'm going to click on assessment coordinator information. Will take me to a link and this is where you will have to sign in okay and then you get to the coordinator information because there's so much information i put this uh, index on the right hand side i'm going to look at the text dependent analysis for this year all right, here you will find 
organizing a TDA. This is all DPI's documents. You can use this in class. This is the student checklist that you can use in class and on the test. Here are tips for writing it. And here's the scoring rubric. So if you need to have um, any of these documents, you want to share these with your staff, you certainly can download those and print those. Um, again, the student checklist is something that they can use on the test. It has been approved by DPI. We discussed one th uh, thing yesterday, the question came up, uh, does spelling count? So let's take a look at the TDA uh, rubric for scoring. And here we go. So you see it's a zero to four rating scale. Uh, I'm going to just pick on two. Number two, we're gonna look down and this tells you all the things that they're looking for. And at the very bottom, errors may be present in sentence formation, grammar usage, spelling, capitalization, and punctuation. Errors present, uh, errors present may interfere with meaning. That is the key to me. So if the spelling or the punctuation interferes with the meaning of sent the sentence, then that um, is cause for it to be uh, the score to be dropped as a whole. So there are several things that you can see on this list that go into making a two. Um, you'll notice that it's a similar kind of list um, in, in a three, the difference between proficient and basic um, in that only there are some errors present versus errors, this might be many, uh, excuse me, many are over here, so just errors. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so just, you may wanna keep this in mind and this is something that you can share with your staff. Going back to our page, there's also, these are very lengthy documents um, that have information and samples in them um, that you may want to share with your staff. All right, let's jump back to the PowerPoint for a few minutes. Okay. So, what does it look like when students log in? Was a question, and uh, we were looking at um, some of the issues that happen that are our errors, some mistakes that happen with uh, students in testing. One of them is that once they log into a content area, the ticket that you get has is good for the content area, um, but not a session. So they are they're able to select the sessions that are available, and uh, once they've completed one, it's grayed out. They can't select it. But here's an example of 10th grade social studies: two sessions, just <clears throat> just excuse me, just like there is in fourth grade and eighth grade. If you say, for instance, to your class, today we're working on session one of social studies, and a student either accidentally or on purpose uh, selects session two, here's the first thing that I would do. Don't panic. In this particular case, in social studies, these sessions are approximately the same length. It doesn't matter which one they do first. Uh, none of the uh, uh, sessions build one upon the other. It's even in mathematics, you do not, it's, it's best to do session one and then session two. Um, in the past, we've had some restrictions around that, but not anymore. I would suggest taking all the sessions in order, but don't panic if a student picks the wrong one. Now the issue becomes one of timing. So for instance, if you take a look at English language arts, and the amount of time it takes for each of the sessions, you'll notice that text-dependent analysis and the reading portions are much longer than the listening and the writing. So um, that could be an issue as far as scheduling. Doesn't matter as far as taking the test is concerned. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, we come up against is what happens when a student um, clicks the wrong session, does a couple questions and says, ah, I'm in the wrong place, what do I do? And then they go and, and take themselves out of the test and submit it. So in the text administration manual, there are several, um, there are several decision trees, one of which is what happens when you start testing without appropriate ac uh, accommodations. 
This takes us through what it is that we should do and how to make decisions. There is one for student closed the session prematurely and submitted it. Um, I can tell you that the, general, the rule of thumb is two minutes or two questions. So if the student has been in a session for two minutes or less, we're good to go. I can, re, I can unlock that here at the local level. If the, and, not or, but and the student has answered two or fewer questions, I can unlock that after they've submitted accidentally. Anything else, I will need to um, have reasons why we should unlock that. And I have to apply to have it unlocked to DPI. That process could vary in length. It could take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to a day, depending on how busy they are in reviewing all the information. I can tell you that if you get to the end of a session uh, and a student panics, you've been working on things for about 45 minutes, student panics and submits, even though they're not done, it would be very difficult for us to open it uh, because the student has had an out long an opportunity to take a look at tests, but don't hesitate to ask. You send me an email um, or call if you have questions or if you want uh, information about what happens when a student closes the test. Uh, we're going to take a look just a minute at several things. In fact, let's do that now. So, what is it like for a student to go into the uh, into the test and um, get started. So let's, in fact, go and do a practice test because there are several people who've never done the forward exam before, never coordinated. So let's take a look. We're going to go to the online tools. And this is very similar, almost identical to what you would see once you start, start testing. Uh, the only difference is that below the online tools training, you will see the words test sign in or test login. So I'm going to look at sample items and we're going to go here. Let's take a look at fifth grade ELA and a sampler. Now a student is going to be faced with a screen almost identical to this and this is where they will need their tickets. On the ticket you will find a username and a password. In this case because it's practice Username and password are listed. So let me log in. E L A five S A M P. Oops, that's four. Five S A M P, and then the ever popular T E S T one two three four. That's your password. So the first thing students will see is they will see their name and any accommodations that they need to have. It should match what's on the ticket. They will then be able to continue on to the directions. If it's not, close out by exiting. So let's continue. And here again, you'll see that this is four different sessions that they will be responsible to take. Again, suggested, strongly urged that you start with text dependent analysis right away. Let's just jump into reading for grade five. And you begin by having several pages of directions. Now, if you have an accommodation or excuse me, a designated support of stacked translations, what you will see is Spanish translation on one page. My apologies. Um, you'll see Spanish on one page. And then on the next page, you'll see English. <coughs> wow, that's not fun. Okay, so you can click through. My suggestion would be that um, the first time through, you take students through this entire, uh, these pages. <coughs> Sorry. Once they've done this once, None of the directions change between the different sessions or between the tests. So you can kind of skip through these after the first time. If there are any questions, you always can return to this. Okay, 
show us the tools, and then you get to begin the test. The first question comes up, you see the tools at the top. <coughs> My apologies. Um, review and end the test is down here. Uh, next, so I'm going to just click and answer. All the tools are available, and I'm going to click next. When I'm done, I review and end test. It shows me what I've completed and what I have not. And then if you are at the end of the day and yet um, it says end test, um, you are, if you are going to continue the, to the test, return to review. Uh, you can return to the questions as well. Now, there is on the test, if you submit, um, doesn't work this way on the practice test, but if you submit, that means you're done with the test. If you end the test, um, that means you're done for the day. So if you have a case in which students start um, an hour before lunch and a student is taking more time and you need to stop, you can pause and exit the test. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit, but that's not a feature available on the practice test. All right, I'm going to uh, uh, go back to the PowerPoint and we'll uh, continue there. <clears throat> Tickets. Tickets use, as I said, use the same ticket for all sessions within a content area. Um, if you have a missing ticket, please let us know. If the uh, ticket needs to be changed, please let us know as well. Uh, I have a document on the website of how to print tickets, and I'll show you where that is in just a moment. Very, very useful. Keep these items secure. Don't just leave them sit out. Um, you may think it's just a, oh, it's just a ticket. Well, um, these are secure test items. Please keep them locked. When you're finished with all the tickets, shred them. Uh, we'll take a look at a test at a, a series of tickets in just a moment. And uh, I'll show you that you, there is a page that you'll be getting that has all the, the passwords and uh, usernames on them. So we'll keep that. Suppose a student finishes at the end of the day, um, you shred the ticket only to find out that they actually did not finish. They thought they finished, so they closed their Chromebook, shut down. Next day you come back, you've run a report on how to, uh, to see who's finished and who's not. And sure enough, they have not finished. They shredded the ticket, that's okay. You have a way of getting uh, the ticket, the username and password as well. <clears throat> uh, just, we're gonna finish up with this and then we'll take a look at how you find the progress report, what tickets look like, etc. So Chromebooks, definitely only Chromebooks. Uh, DRC Insight is the name of the app. Students need to be logged out. They cannot be logged in as themselves. It's as if they were logging in as a guest, but before that, in the lower left-hand corner, there is an app menu. They can select the DRC Insight. Three things that Tech Services wanted me to tell you about prior to um, actually getting started testing. Number one, all students with Chromebooks, um, it's best idea to do a health check on them make sure that they are working correctly, and if there are some issues with the health check, to get that in going sooner rather than later. Number two, um, <clears throat> we've had some issues in the past with the writing component that keyboards have been set to a um, keyboard other than the US keyboard. What happens then if they actually even go into it as US international keyboard, uh, apostrophes and quote marks, uh, commas, don't work for whatever reason. So on the lower right-hand side of a Chromebook, right over here, you would find a um, the settings, look at keyboard, ensure that the keyboard is set to US keyboard. So that's the second piece. The third piece is an issue that we've had with um, map testing. Um, if it comes up with forward testing and you end up having the wrong screen resolution. So you'll get a message, an error message across the screen that'll say, uh, this is the incorrect, please set it to such and such. 
Um, in order to do that, it is control alt zero. Control alt zero on the keyboard. That automatically resets the, the resolution of the screen back to factory settings, which is what the software is looking for. So those three things. Uh, control alt zero for the for the screen resolution, uh, the keyboard, and um, the health check. Okay, headphones required for a listening session of the ELA. You do not have to do use district provided or purchased or school purchased headsets, headphones. Students can use earbuds if they want. Uh, students have their um, uh, their Apple earbuds, earbuds, excuse me, um, linked to their Chromebooks, that's fine, they can use those. Uh, but you're also, if you have um, need for headphones, you as a school should be ordering them. And if that's an issue, let me know. All right, let's take a look at how to get a progress report. So this will be uh, posted on the on our website, um, but let's actually go through and do it. So let's log in to <coughs> eDirect, <coughs> excuse me. So here's the eDirect login. If anyone has issues with not being able to log in, please let me know. All right, to get reports, you go to My Applications, click on that. You'll notice that there are all kinds of choices here. Last year, they were spread out from one side of the uh, menu to the other. This year, they're changed. We're going to look for student information, student reports, so student management. And when we get to that, You'll notice there are three buttons here, manage students, student transfer form, and student status dashboard. That's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the dashboard. I'm going to select a site, and I'm going to pick on, oh, let's pick on Chavez. Cesar Chavez School, and you'll notice that you have all kinds of different um, uh, test names pop up, please make sure you check spring 2020. You don't want to see the progress on what was happening in 2017. So selecting that, we need to wait for a moment as it goes and gets that information and gets it ready to display. And then you're going to get several graphs. <clears throat> so right now, no one has started testing. So that it makes sense that we're all red, but not tested would be in gray. This would be students who have either opted out or those who are taking the dynamic learning maps in alternate assessment. If you want to see the same information in a table form, click here or here. Goes back, toggles back and forth between a graph and a table. You'll notice this is just the status overall. I want to know about my third graders. You can check here. I can see that I have 594 tests registered and uh, zero started. So that will change as soon as you begin testing. Another way of looking at it might be the content areas. So English language arts, how are we doing? Math, science, social studies. So in elementary schools, this would be for fourth grade science, fourth grade social studies. Middle schools, it would be eighth grade science, eighth grade social studies. Same thing is here, you can break it down by grade level, which components of the test they're taking and how they're doing progress-wise. Let's suppose I wanna take a look and see how my <clears throat> third grade math students are doing. I'm gonna click on that and it will show me just third grade math. You can see that the filter is set up here, third grade math. But down at the bottom is now uh, a chance to export this to CSV. You can take all this information on a regular basis and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, that will allow you to sort it, to see who is finished, who is not. Um, and if this might be some way that uh, you can double check on a regular basis uh, to see if everybody is in fact, uh, who needs to have makeup tests assigned, et cetera. 
During the first week or two of testing, I would suggest doing that on a weekly basis or after a grade is supposed to be finished. But as we get closer and closer to the end, I would suggest strongly that you do that on a regular basis, whether it's daily, every other day, just to check to see the progress to the completion of all the students. <clears throat> so that's an export in CSV. You can also see this here uh, listed below. So these are all the fourth graders at Chavez. Uh, it's a little bit easier sometimes to sort things when you are um, in a, a spreadsheet. Okay, so I am going to get out of this particular component and I'm going to go and take a look at uh, tickets. <clears throat> Let me, uh, I'm going to click on the forward exam site. This happens to be, uh, let's see that, I don't want that one. <clears throat> We're gonna click onto the coordinators page and there are at the bottom, some quick guides for you. Proctor quick guides. One is how to print tickets. All up to date, ready to go. The quick guide for proctors, let's take a look at that. Here's what it looks like when you log in on a Chromebook. Depending <coughs> Excuse me, depending on the machine, I think oftentimes they have a choice. So click on Wisconsin, click on test sign in. There's a script that you can use to read to students. Uh, I would strongly, I expect that that's actually done in every, every setting. This begins on page 25 of the uh, test administrator's manual. There's the sign in, you've seen that. The tickets, we'll talk about tickets in just a moment. Boy, this is gonna be great and recorded. Uh, here's pausing the test. So um, once you pause, you can um, keep it uh, going for 20 minutes. If student needs to use the restroom, you can go and do that. Uh, there's a resume button um, and there's an exit button. Okay, please make sure that you are using exit um, instead of submitting. So having completed the test, there's directions here how to do things, completing the test and for not having completed the test yet. So this is a pretty good document, uh, very useful, carry it around with you. Uh, so you can say, oh yeah, it's right here. And flip through that, that was one of the suggestions by our team yesterday. So, um, and then also how to print tickets. That takes you through um, where to go in eDirect to find the tickets. So let's actually go in um, and take a look at uh, some tickets. I know that they are a PDF, so I'm gonna open PDF up. Uh, we're gonna go into last year's tickets. So pardon me while I manage uh, to go through this forward exam. From last year, we're gonna take a look at makeup tickets and we're gonna pick on O'Keefe session one. So this is what it looks like. You'll get three, at least three pages. First page will have the explanation of the, the tickets and rosters, prior to testing some instructions. But here's what you wanna keep. Beginning on page two, this is going to be all the names of the students, their username, password, and their accommodations. So this is something that you wanna make sure um, is correct. Um, I apologize, but I'm going to have to uh, just let that go. I'll call them back later. <clears throat> um, and at the bottom is the actual ticket. You'll notice that you have the username and password, that the accommodations are present here as well. If those don't match, if there is a need for accommodations and you don't see those, or the teacher doesn't see them, don't start the test. Wait, send us an email, we'll put the accommodations in, and then you will need to print a new updated ticket. Um, the old password and user, username will work, but the old password will not. So please make sure that you do that. Let us know 
um, and then you will use the how to print a ticket uh, document to make sure that you get uh, that taken care of. So that's what a ticket uh, tickets look like. You will be getting tickets um, for this uh, year in a couple days. We're in the process of printing them right now. So uh, let's continue going through the PowerPoint. So we've got progress report. Finding out that, okay, all right. I'm gonna open it up for questions in just a bit, um, but right now I wanna continue on with um, the last pieces. Uh, be careful in scheduling spring map, making sure that you understand that the time between forward and the time between map assessment should be as maximized as much as possible. I know that it's not possible to do it uh, for every student, especially with makeups, but please keep, just keep that in mind when you're scheduling. Both reading and math are required. Our window is the 27th of April through May 2nd. Um, by the 27th of May, you will have this data in dashboard. Um, it will be on a daily basis uploaded to um, EduClimber. So you, if you want information on a daily basis or you need it before the, the 27th of May, you might be able to get it there. The official data source is data dashboard. Uh, let's see, Spring Pals going on similar time frame. Uh, so 4K through 2, 20th of April through May 2nd, scores uploaded May 22nd, excuse me, scores uploaded by the 5th of June. There will be some changes in PALS reading readiness screener for next year. Uh, 4K will continue using PALS. It's very difficult to find a good replacement for PALS for 4K. Grades 1, 2, excuse me, K1 and 2 are moving to fast bridge early reading and CBM reading. It's dependent on the grade and what time of year. Professional development for this um, is required. Staff must pass a quiz in order to be able to give the assessments and that begins as soon as you can. So the, the information is up and running. It's ready to roll. You can sign in and actually look at it right now. Um, and if you have specific questions, more information will be coming out shortly. Final thing before we go to the, uh, if there are any questions, climate survey will be 6th through the 24th of April. Nothing like packing it all into one small amount of time. However, it is important that we give all students an opportunity to take the climate survey. We want to hear from all of the students to see how they're doing, how they're feeling, how things are going for them in, in their schools. So, as always, uh, we will be uh, sharing this icon with um, uh, the librarian. So they will post this on the LMC or uh, LibGuide homepage. Clicking on this will take you into uh, the survey itself. Um, it's available in three languages. Students will need to log in and go ahead and take the survey. So I'm going to stop sharing right now. And I've got, uh, there's, uh, if there are any questions, you can unmute your microphone and uh, ask away or send me a chat. All right, hearing no questions, I'm assuming that uh, if there are any, you'll know, you know how to get a hold of me. Please make sure that uh, um, you let me know if there are questions sooner rather than later. I wanna make sure that things go as smoothly as possible for you. All right, thanks so much, bye now.